the UK government may go as far as banning protests, as clashes between protesters are beginning to cause a breakdown of law and order on the streets of the UK. It seems like the majority of the time, the pro-Palestinian protesters who like to stir trouble the most. Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hope you are feeling good. Today we are going to be checking out a video titled Fights Break Out After UK Ban Muslim Residents. Wow, I believe this is going to be an interesting one. Let's check it out. Go. Cool. Campus police at UCLA have increased security following a weekend of violence amid dueling protests over the war in Gaza. The rally started peacefully, but then shouting matches between pro-Palestinian and pro-Israeli protesters turned to pushing and shoving. One woman was either pushed or fell to the ground, hit her head on the pavement. UCLA says it was dismayed that the protests became violent. You see the tent encampment, the pro-Palestinian tent encampment. It is surrounded by wooden barricades. It is growing larger. And yesterday, there was an opposing or dueling protest by pro-Israel supporters. They used this setup over here, which they left behind with a big video screen. And you can see how these two protests were happening uh, really just maybe 100 yards away from each other or less. And there was bound to be a tension, and things did escalate fairly quickly. On the one side were pro-Israel demonstrators, on the other those who oppose Israel and its war in Gaza. The pro-Israel demonstration was organized by the Israeli American Council and it was held right next to the pa Palestinian Solidarity Encampment. It's incredibly sad and heartbreaking that there have been innocent lives lost on both sides, but the 133 remaining hostages um, are not being spoken up for in a loud enough way, and that's why we wanted to come out and represent. <laughs> At one point, things got violent. A pro-Israel demonstrator was either pushed or falls to the ground. Later, she was carried out of the crowd with visible injuries to her head. Those on the pro-Palestinian side say the counter-protesters were provoking their peaceful display. The UK has been forced to ban many residents who have been responsible for initiating fights during what should have been a peaceful protest. These deadly clashes between pro-Palestine and pro-Israeli protesters have been a cause for concern for the UK government. The Sunak-led administration has sworn to ban the visas of anyone who promotes violence during these peaceful protests. The UK government may go as far as banning protests, as clashes between protesters are beginning to cause a breakdown of law and order on the streets of the UK. It seems like the majority of the time, the pro-Palestinian protesters, who like to stir trouble the most, or instigating conflict just to prove a point for a group that has been labeled a terrorist organization by the government. It's really heartbreaking to see people hurt simply because they are defending what they believe in. They are attacking us, they have been pushing us, and we're trying to keep our cool and control ourselves, not respond because the, the goal they do is to provoke us, and we are trying not to be affected by them. The University of California Police Department brought in extra security and officers showed up in force in riot gear. As far as we know, nobody was arrested. UCLA issued a statement that said this, quote, as an institution of higher education, we stand firmly for the idea that even when we disagree, we must still engage respectfully and recognize one another's humanity. We are dismayed that certain individuals chose to jeopardize the physical safety of the community. All right, let's go to some aerial pictures that were shot from this morning from Sky 5 HD. And you see that the size of the encampment, the pro-Palestinian tent encampment here, 50 tents, it started with just a few. Now there are more than 50. It appears that the university plans to leave this tent encampment here, at least for the time being. Now, let's talk about what's going on this morning. Come back to our ground shot. We spoke to the folks uh, organizing the pro-Israel demonstration from yesterday. They've left their video screen here. News snippets from the Hamas attack on Israel from October 7th. They're going to project it in this direction towards the pro-Palestinian protesters camped out over there. So that's bound to increase tension here even more. The simple truth is the pro-Palestinian protesters have taken over institutions like UCLA 
This has made the Israeli population in the school feel quite threatened because they cannot comprehend people who will back a terrorist organization. In fact, they took it upon themselves to remind the pro-Palestinian protesters of the horrors that have been wrought on Israel by Hamas. But if I'm being honest, I don't think the pro-Palestinian supporters will pay much attention to whatever their Israeli counterparts have to show them. Both sides will feel like they are in the right. The dividing line will be what these groups decide to do when their emotions are high. Uh, but in other news, uh, three police officers were injured and 40 people were arrested during a pro-Palestinian demonstration in Westminster last night. Yes, the protest organised by the Palestine Solidarity Campaign, amid other groups, began in Whitehall at six o'clock. It was due to end two hours later, but as often happens at these events... <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, I'll start off from uh, the beginning. Enough's enough. Uh, what I take from it is that uh, there are about 10,000 demonstrators on the streets of London on a Tuesday evening. Uh, hundreds and hundreds of police officers had their leave cancelled. Uh, they were drawn in from all over London. Three police officers were injured. One was seriously injured. A young female had a bottle thrown at her, hit her in the face, and she was hospitalised. I've seen the photographs of her. They're not very nice at all. They're not pleasant. And the dental treatment alone will cost two and a half to three thousand uh, pounds to repair. Their violence has become out of order. And it's always the police that are the brunt of this. So enough is enough. The time has come for the Met Police, the mayor, the Home Secretary to ban these marches and allow thousands of police officers that are taken away from already depleted areas to go back to their divisions and police the streets rather than having their leave cancelled. And every weekend is the same. And I think the police, the public, everyone has had enough of it. Enough's enough. There is a saying that when two elephants fight, the grass suffers. In this case, the elephants are the protesters from both camps and the police are the poor grass caught up in this brewing conflict between the pro-Palestinian and pro-Israeli protesters. There is always a clash between these protests and it always seems to leave injured policemen and women who simply want to ensure the safety of every protester. The simple fact remains, if there is no protest, then there will be no violence or injured people and police personnel. This leads some among the police to call for a ban on all protests, because who's going to protect the undermanned police? But then banning protests as a whole will probably not be the best move from the government and other institutions like universities, because it could easily lead to more protests. What will Sunak's government do? Will the government have to ban the visas of people leading these protests? It must be said that for the first two hours of this protest, it was peaceful. There were the majority of people there going to exercise a democratic right to express their strong held view. Although within that group, there is a significant chunk of people who clearly turned up to cause trouble, to ignore dispersal orders, to ignore the lawful way of doing protest. Mm -hmm. How do we separate? those two issues. It's very difficult, really, Tom. I mean, let's be honest about it. These demonstrators, if we've got a concern, we're absolutely right. You can take to the streets uh, to voice your concerns. Um, but let's actually look at the transfer side. What about the law abiding public? What about victims of crime throughout the whole of London? Coach loads of police officers are being taken from these already depleted divisions and put on the streets of London. And you, you, what can you do? Well, what you can do is say, you've said your piece, the violence is unacceptable, the time has come for you now to go home, stay at home. What you're doing now, some of you, is you're committing gratuitous violence. Yeah, happening? I guess the pro I mean, one yes, of the problems, stupid. Norman, one of the problems with that is that, as we've seen, a number of uh, civil liberties groups uh, try to take the Home Office to to court, and sometimes they win over clampdowns on, on protests. But Norman, you're, um, you mentioned at the top that a female police officer has um, serious facial injuries as a result. Uh, can you just uh, tell us, do you know anything about her condition? Is is she going to be okay? Well, she was in hospital when I last heard. I had a photograph from one of her colleagues sent to me this morning, and it's horrible. She's a young female. She's she's a lovely looking young girl that just put on a uniform, went on duty to keep the peace, to stand between good and bad and right and wrong, and a bottle hit her in the face. So yes, I think she well, she's going to be okay. 
but it's a huge bill, almost £3,000, to pay for her dental repair alone. Her lips are cut, her face is bruised, and she's feeling very low today. Sadly, the police are not equipped for this type of job. It won't be out of order to say that they are certainly not paid enough to risk their lives every time a pro-Palestinian takes to the streets with placards that make both UK citizens and Israeli people who are lawfully living in the UK. If the government isn't going to ban the protests, then maybe they should ban anyone who promotes violence at these protests. A protest is a place where the public can make their voice heard, and it should not be turned to somewhere nobody can feel safe. The government really has much to do when it comes to solving this problem. Oh wow, what an interesting uh, video. We can all tell that a protest uh, is a place where the public or the citizen uh, get their voice held by the government. But I understand that it's okay to voice out your opinion. It's okay to voice out your grievance through protest. But in a situation whereby uh, you turn the protest into, into, into a violent protest, I believe that that is totally unacceptable. And in most of those cases, uh, the police people trying to uh, maintain the peace uh, between uh, the good, between the good and the bad, between the bad and the good, at the end of the day, they are the one affected. Just like the case we have seen in this video, a beautiful young police officer that was stoned with a bottle just all because she was trying to uh, help the people maintain peace. I believe that is totally unacceptable. It's okay to uh, disagree with something. It's okay to disagree to agree. It's okay to have your own individual opinion. It's okay to come out to voice out your opinion through protest. But it becomes a problem when the protest turns into a violent protest. When you start hurting people in order to voice out your opinion, that becomes a very big problem. Because at the end of the day, uh, a peaceful protest that uh, a protest that started peacefully at the end of the day it turns into a violent protest. At the end of the day, a lot of innocent people are going to be harmed, which I believe that is totally unacceptable. Even the police that try to, you know, maintain peace uh, between the protesters at the end of the day, they are the one bearing the pain, which I believe that is totally unacceptable. If you are not okay, uh with what someone is doing and there's a better way to confront the person through dialogue instead of uh, confronting the person violently. I believe that is totally unacceptable. The government have given uh, uh, the, the citizen, the people, uh, a way to voice out their opinion, a way to voice out their grievance. And people tend to take advantage of that in order to approach it in a violent way, which I believe that is that is totally, totally unacceptable. So I really feel for the police officer that uh, that got injured as a result of the protest. I believe uh, that is totally unacceptable. I understand that a lot of people show their support for Gaza, show their support for Hamas because they believe a lot of people, a lot of uh, children and civilians are dying, are dying in Gaza. And a lot of people also show their support for Israel because they believe Israel is fighting to defend their nation. Israel is fighting a just cause, just like what they are saying that Hamas is still owing a lot of uh, Israeli as hostage. I believe if Hamas will be ready to release the hostage, I believe the people of Israel will also be ready to negotiate and they can come into a two-state solution where the international communities can help facilitate a two-state solution in order to resolve this conflict between Israel and Gaza. And I really feel for the police officer uh, that got injured as a result of the protest. And I, for one, I condemn violence during protests. If you want to voice out your opinion, you want to voice out your grievance through protests, you are allowed to do that. But you shouldn't try to uh, ap approach it in a violent way and as a result of that we hurt a lot of innocent people i believe that is totally unacceptable and it's because of this uh, behavior that is making uk right now to decide to give a, a lot of people visa a lot, they decide to ban a lot of people visa as a result of this action wow so i would like to hear your comments based on what we have seen in this video 
Don't forget, click on the subscribe button, click on the like button. Do have a nice day. Oh,